particular here. What we're going to do is we're going to deal with agenda item number eight first, and then we're going to go to agenda item number 14. So number eight is the uh, Lindale Road application. So we're going to have a presentation first, and then we'll listen to the representative and then the applicant. Okay, so can we have a shout and a half, please, so we're going to take our presentation. Thank you, Chair. This proposal is for a new dwelling on an area of garden land adjacent to number 16, Lindale Road. The site itself is within Mount Drive Conservation Area and is primarily residential in character. The residential road comprises large detached houses of both Victorian and arts and crafts style, although there are no modern developments further down the road. Um, this proposed dwelling has been designed to consider the details of adjacent houses and the character of the conservation area, but still has a modern contemporary style. It's considered an acceptable design that respects its setting both in the street scene and within the character of the conservation area. An element of glazing is included on all the side elevations, um, and conditions are proposed, if approved, um, that these should be obscurely glazed to prevent any overlooking of adjacent properties. It's considered that the proposal is acceptable and of course the relevant planning policies, both nationally and locally, and is recommended for approval, and there is a qualified petition for objection. Um, thank you, Cheryl. Does the representative want to come forward and, and, and speak? Yeah. If you can just sit at the table there.
these heights are significant is the current contextual drawing of the 057106, which the appearance of the measuring property is considerably larger than it actually is. This would seem a gross misrepresentation and we suggest should require a removal before this proposal is considered any further. We have an opportunity to ensure that the delicate street profile of the road is maintained and ask that this proposal is rejected on the grounds that it is overbearing and that the current design in general, and for the third story in particular, does not relate well to the surrounding properties. It's too big and over dominant at the front. To pass this building in its current form would, without that, cause detrimental damage to all the few streets in the area that is much to maintain a clear and attractive character. Thank you, Madam Chair, and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Matthew Ashton, I'm a chartered architect and director of engineering studio. We represent uh, the applicant, Mr. Norman Cowan, as his agent, and we've just had this scheme that's uh, for consideration before you this evening. You'll have read the report from your case officer uh, recommending approval for this application, and you'll have noted that no objections have been received from the statutory council to it. We consider the detailed framework of the report, together with the comp comprehensive project information that's been submitted, I politely request that members of the committee endorse the case officer's report in its assessment of this application. I'll speak just briefly to discuss some of the qualities of the architecture, our approach to the site, and to clarify aspects of the design. We were commissioned to design a family home for occupation by Mr. Cowley and his two sons on a site adjacent to their existing home at number 16 in the road. The application site forms part of the grounds of the existing home and is a gap site in the Mel's Drive Conservation Area with an outline consent for a dwelling which lasted in 1987. The proposal follows closely the building line and footprint proportion of the properties along the street and is a three story, villa type dwelling addressing the principal elevation to the end of the road. The house features an innovative layout with suites to the upper floors, giving his sons, in effect, private quarters that would focus on the generous living spaces to the ground floor that the family may gather together, taking advantage of the garden and the setting of the property. The design concept is that of a single family home with space for independence. I understand there may have been some confusion as to the layout, and let me reassure members of the committee that the application is for a single family. Turning to appearance, we've made an extensive assessment of the context and have taken full account of the Council's adopted conservation area appraisal. As you all know, in their heritage statement submitted with the application, we've designed a home which draws upon the essential character of the conservation area. In material and form, we've interpreted the context in a building which embodies those features of the area which make it such a distinctive setting. For example, express pitch roofs, the use of render and facing brickwork, and express bay windows, combining to create depth in the elevations and a varied roof line which complement the setting and surroundings of the more rural golf course. The applicant has engaged fully in the planning process and submitting the scheme for pre-application comment, which was favourable, through to instructing me as his architect to meet with the petitioners to discuss their concerns and subsequently develop revised proposals, which he considered today following the site visit earlier this week. In the revised proposals, we sought to address the representations whilst maintaining the essential strength of the design concept. Change can often be met with apprehension, and we are considering a gap site in a conservation area. Yet it is this pattern of change in development which provides the rich variety of scale, material, and form of houses along the Indore Road, which we now regard as the essential character of the street. We have designed a family home which addresses this pattern of change in an honest, contemporary manner, as is noted in the case officer's report. Objections to new developments are often raised on the principle of not in my backyard, but specifically in this instance, the applicant himself is a long-standing resident of the community since 1986, and he seeks here to build a home which will meet the needs of his family on their site and into the future. Considering the objections to the design raised, I would return again to the case officer's report, which considers in detail those items which are planning matters and concludes that the form of development is acceptable. Concerning for the look into neighbouring properties, I dealt with through conditions relating to privacy screens on balconies and obscured glazing to side windows. I note also conditions <coughs> in respect of levels for the height of the building and 
addition to those covering facing materials and landscape. And trust that these will reassure members of the community that the authority has sufficient control and influence to translate the effort finishing buildings into a high quality building. I have no further new information to submit before you today, but as a con contemporary design, respectful of the context in its appearance, scale, and mass, we believe the proposal will make a positive contribution to the varied streetscape in Lingo Road and the wider Mel Drive conservation area. The design reflects the applicant's desire for high quality architecture and his commitment to the planning process. We therefore respectfully request members of the committee to support the case officer's recommendation for approval this evening. I thank you all very much for your time. Thank you, Based on the plans that have been submitted to us for assessment, 
and if you have any difference in, in levels, that if approved, um, and, it's diff and it's constructed different to the approved plans that are there in similar in the land levels, it would result in a new application. Um, and there is a condition, condition eight, which asks for prompt data uh, measurements showing levels on the existing site compared to the, the how desired site as well. So if, again, there is any issue of error with the submitted plans, it would be picked up at that stage. And of course, it's actually- well, Maybe you can't have this question, but when we discussed this on Tuesday at the site, the Suyin chair, of course, um, I think we have established that this particular proposal was in fact no higher from a rich level than the adjacent properties. If that's incorrect, please tell me. I got that impression that the rich height of this proposed development was about the same, if not lower, than the two houses on each side. That, well, that's illustrated perfectly. The middle is the top part that shows the proposed development in the middle, and it shows the roof line of the adjacent properties on each side. And I think if you can clearly see that as a matter of fact, the proposed development is lower than the two adjacent properties. That's all I wanted to say. Um, I've got some further thoughts on this, but would anybody else like to comment on the results of the site visit before I uh, mention something else?